Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris from PC Addicts, and this video we're going to be installing Microsoft's Hyper-V Server 2012 on this machine. And it's, I guess you could consider it the core version. There's not going to be any GUI at all, so once we boot it up and install it, it's just going to have a couple little command line windows here, and then we're going to manage it remotely. Uh, we can RDP into it, or we can even set up stuff like Server Manager or Hyper-V Server Manager um, to be able to manage this thing. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you saw this video here where I made this USB flash drive bootable, I put uh, Microsoft's Hyper-V Server 2012 ISO on it, basically install media. So I'm going to go ahead and boot up off this thing um, and uh, go ahead and get the install started. Alright, standard install stuff. I'm just going to hit next and install now. Okay, so I'm going to hit Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a custom install. I want to do some work with these drives. You can see I have actually two drives. I have drive zero and a drive one. Drive zero is like probably 150 gigs and then uh, drive one is probably 240 or something. So anyways, typically what I like to do is actually delete everything that's in here. I go to drive, I click one, go to drive options, hit delete. Do the same thing here. Just kind of clean it out. Let's see, and delete. Now we got the two drives. So here's one little thing. And it's better to do it now than have to do it later. You can do it later, and you can do it in PowerShell, or you can do it in uh, just with this part. But um, we need to actually allocate. See, what I'm going to be doing is installing the OS, the Hyper-V server, on the 150 gig drive, and then for the 232 gig or 235 gig, or whatever, I'm going to, that's where I'm going to be storing all my VMs. So for this one, for the VMs, what I need to do is I need to actually click on New, and I'm just going to hit Apply, and there we go. We just basically set the volume up and, and there's a partition on it and everything. That way Windows will see it later and we don't have to screw with it later. But um, all right, so I'm going to click on the drive that we want to install it on. And this is just pretty much standard win Windows installation stuff. Nothing new here. We'll let this roll and uh, come back when it's done. And with installing it off this thing, it really only took probably a good four minutes, maybe five minutes, if that, to get to, to this point. If you're interested in seeing on uh, you know the specs on this machine that I'm running this on, because this is going to be kind of the foundation of uh, a lot of future videos that are going to be coming out, I'm going to be putting all the virtual machines on this thing. And uh, but if you want to see the specs of this machine, check out this video here where uh, Junior and I ran some some gaming tests to uh, test out the APU. So just the APU, no video card or anything. So anyways, okay. So the first question is, you must set your password. Okay, so I'm going to set up a password. Let's do, um, I'll probably be showing that password later, so. Okay, and this is your, this is basically the screen you see once you're even, once you're done too. So, um, there's a few, few things I want to configure. Actually, there's quite a bit I want to configure here before we're going to sit down on the other computer remote into this thing to start installing VMs. But um, so the first thing I like to do is number one, domain slash work group. I don't have a domain here at home anymore, so I kind of slim things down. So what I want to do is just hit one and I want to name a work group. Um, so I'm going to hit W for work group and let's just name something like, well, the cat's making a lot of noise, so let's, let's, let's name it. Uh, cat. Yeah, I don't know. Don't ask why, I just did. So. Alright, welcome to the cat group. So now let's do number two. We're going to do computer names. Give this thing a name. We're going to call it just VM Server 1 because I may do another one or something. So this computer name is now VM Server 1. You must restart, make the changes. I'm going to go ahead and restart. I know a lot of people don't. They'll hit no and then just keep making configuration changes, but the restarts are pretty quick on this thing. So um, I'd rather just do it by the book here and one at a time. Okay, and this is actually the default login screen here that, you know, if you're if this is a headless box or it's sitting back somewhere um, and somebody has a monitor plugged into it, this is what you're going to see. So we're going to log in. And we're ready. So, all right, the next thing we're going to do, let's skip down to number eight where we're going to set our network settings. By default, it's set up for DHCP. Obviously, for servers, I like them set statically, and I think a lot of you guys do too. So I'm going to hit number eight for network. Uh, available network it actually got an address so we know um, network cards working and everything so we're gonna select an adapter if you have more than one card um, you can you know choose but ours is 
index number 11. So our next thing is going to be let's set the network address. So we're just going to give this thing, um, wants to know if it's DHCP or static, hit S for static. Enter static IP address, we're going to do 10.2.0.15, I know that's available. Submit mask, we're going to do class C, so 255.255.255.0. .255 and a default gateway is going to be my router, 10.2.0.1, so we can get out on the internet. All right, so we're done with number one under the network settings. Now we're going to do number two, it's the DNS. Um, we're going to go ahead and just, I'm going to give it the my routers here, 10.2.0.1. And for secondary, I'll just do a public one that's out there, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. All right. And we're done with the network, so I'm going to return to the main menu, number four. Now, um, we're back at our main menu here, so what I'm going to do now is set the date and time, which is number nine. So, because we obviously want this correct, so there's no communication errors going out to... Um, Windows updates or anything like that, and we are Central Time US, and it is 5.27 in the morning. Yep, that is the right time and date. So, okay, now after the date and time, let's go back up to number three. We're going to add a local administrator, um, just so we can work off a different administrator account. You never know. Um, it's just something I like to do. So, enter account to join local administrator group. So, I'm going to name, uh, let's see, let's name it um, Chris. Type a password for Chris. I'll do the same password because I may do some things where I'm going to show that password uh, to set something up from remote for remote connections. So, anyways, uh, what we're going to do now is configure remote management. So, we're going to do number four. Now, this is going to allow us to uh, remotely manage this thing. So, such as like RDP. So, remote manage. I'm going to hit uh, enable remote manage one. And you can also configure it to respond to ping. So if you want to block ICMP packets or not, you can do that. I'm just going to leave it uh, default. So. so now from this point forward, we can actually RDP into this thing and finish the configuration. But really, there's only a couple more configuration things I want to do here for this video. Okay, so I'm going to return to the main menu number four. And of course, we want to update this thing and patch it, get all the hot fixes done. So we're going to do number five, which is Windows Update Settings. This is where you're going to tell it if you want it to automatically pull them down or manual. I'm just going to hit A for auto. And it's just saying it's a uh, system will check and install updates every day at 3 a.m. It's a default setting. And so, of course, this one we're going to download and install some updates, which is number six. And this is where it's going to just go through and it's going to say, do you want to search for all or just recommend it? I'm going to hit all. Just get this thing fully patched up. So we're just going to let this thing run and when it's done, uh, we're going to be ready to RDP in this thing and do some more videos.